horses did. For example, it's stated in the Brihad uh, Parashara or Shastra, the source document on astrology, that the beginning of the zodiac is one degree Aries. And one degree Aries is the location of the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, when the sun comes over the equator on its way northward. Well, maybe 3,000 years ago it was. <laughs> But due to a phenomenon called precession that we'll study later once we have the background to understand it, the actual location of the equinox has changed. And over the last 3,000 years, it has moved by about 23 degrees. So basically, Western astrology is still based on the idea that first degree Aries is the vernal equinox. And therefore, it has become 23 degrees out of phase with the actual movements of the planets. So what happens when you do a chart in Western astrology is you take the observed position of the planets and then you add 23 degrees and something uh, to all the positions. Then you have to figure out uh, how the actual uh, prediction should be made. And it becomes very convoluted and complicated. But in Vedic astrology, we don't need to do that. Therefore, Vedic astrology is much more simple, straightforward, accurate, and uh, it's also uh, cleaner. Um, what I mean by cleaner is that it doesn't require adjustments to make accurate predictions. Why do we call it Vedic astrology, besides the fact that it's from the Vedas? Well, actually, the name is Jyotish. Jyoti means light, and Isha, of course, means God. Isha means the first, or the origin of everything. So God is the origin of everything, and how does he control the universe? By light. Jyotisha means the light of God, or actually how God reveals himself in light. Since God is the controller, uh, Ishvara also means controller. So Isha could be viewed as short for Ishvara. So Jyotish or Jyotishvara means how God controls the universe with light. It's a very sophisticated concept. When God's light is covered or filtered, then we can't understand how God is acting. In other words, our intelligence becomes covered by the material energy. But when we have real knowledge, then uh, our intelligence is uncovered and our original spiritual intelligence can shine forth. So Jyotisha is also not only God revealing himself, but it also reveals the soul. It gives spiritual light so that we can see who we really are, what our real situation is, what our real options are, what our real destination is. In other words, Jyotisha is meant to be used in conjunction with spiritual teachings. It's not meant to function uh, separately or independently from those teachings. But actually, uh, there are many references to astrology in the Vedic scriptures. Krishna says, I am the light of the sun and moon. Uh, he also says, I see everything by my two eyes the sun and the moon. Wow. So Krishna is seeing everything. He's everywhere. And he knows everything because he is light. And light is everywhere. So that's another way to look at it. We also can understand through Vedic astrology the actions and operation of the material energy. The material energy is like a trap. And when an animal is caught in a trap, Unless he knows how to spring the trap or how to release the, uh, the mechanism, he can't get out. So we're in the same situation. We're in this material world, stuck in a material body. Although we're spiritual beings, how are we to get out of this? Uh, so we have to know the structure of the trap, how the trap is working. Huh? Just like if people are, are trying to escape from jail, uh, 
They need some information about when the different the guards are changed or when the, the opportunities are there for escape. They need a map. They also need a schedule, uh, when the best opportunity is to escape. So the question that we need to ask is, what is the actual structure and operation of the trap in which we find ourselves? So the material world or the material energy operates by time and by light. And astrology describes the time and light of the universe and its changes in great detail. So actually by astrology, we can see when is the best opportunity for us to escape this trap of the material energy and to restore our original spiritual consciousness. And this is the most important use of astrology, not about our career or about getting married or about you know, what we should do for a living or when we're going to get an inheritance or something like that. Huh? That's very mundane. But actually, astrology can show us when is the best time for us to approach a spiritual master? When is the best uh, opportunity for us to perform sadhana leading to self-realization and liberation from this material world? Astrology can show us uh, what deities we should worship at different times and so on and so forth. It's very, very detailed. Astrology or Vedic astrology, Jyotish, uses a particular model to express all the variables of human life in this material world. And it's a very sophisticated model. It's complex. And we're going to learn the elements of this model in this first class today. The Jyotish model is a system of nine planets called Grahas. We're going to use the Sanskrit terminology because I don't want to bring in ideas from Western astrology or astronomy into Vedic astrology. I want to keep the two separate. So we're going to use the term graha for planet. So there are nine planets or grahas. There are 12 signs, uh, the signs of the zodiac, and these are called rashis. And there are also 27 stellar mansions or nakshatras. Nakshatras are a concept which is different from uh, the Western astrology, but it gives great nuance and detail to the uh, different divisions of the signs used in Vedic astrology. Basically, nakshatras are derived from the motions of the moon, whereas the rashis are derived from the motions of the sun. Western astrology only considers the motions of the sun, but Eastern or Vedic astrology also considers the motions of the moon. So the nakshatras are derived from the motions of the moon and the rashis or signs are derived from the motions of the sun. There are also 16 harmonic charts. Harmonics means that the signs of the zodiac, the rashis, are divided into uh, portions called anshas. Anshas means a limb. Uh, so the signs are divided into anshas and then the positions of the planets in not only in the signs or rashis but also in the anshas are mapped onto a separate chart called a varga chart. Varga charts are 16 different kinds according to the number of harmonics into which the Rashis are divided from two all the way up to 60. So by the higher harmonic charts, if we know the exact time of birth, we can make very accurate uh, predictions on uh, using the harmonics or Vargas. And finally, there are 12 houses called Bhavas. The 12 houses represent different areas in the life of the human being. And this is really a very sophisticated system that embodies the entire Vedic philosophy. And when we take a look at those later on, we'll see how that works. So there are four pillars in Vedic astrology, four very important concepts that we need to understand com with complete clarity. Then we can understand what is Vedic astrology. 
So the four pillars are the grahas, the planets, the rashis and nakshatras, or the signs, the vargas, or the harmonic charts, and the bhavas, or the houses. Uh, these four things, I'll go over them again. Grahas, or planets, rashis and nakshatras, or signs, vargas, or harmonic charts, and bhavas. Bhavas are houses. Uh, these four things are the four pillars of Jyotish. And if you understand these fundamentals clearly, then understanding the rest of the science will be very easy. Uh, we're going to go over the detailed definition of nakshatra later on in today's session. I'm just mentioning that it's, it's 